Hey everybody, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to Overkill Rewind. This is the show where you pick the best albums of the year and we review them. For this episode, we're going back 20 years to 1998 and god damn did you guys pick some awesome records to review. Before we get going, make sure you hit subscribe and before I start reviewing your picks, I got a few things to say about 1998. Altogether, metal was kind of going through a strange period in 1998. The stuff that was commercially successful was more new metal and industrial oriented. You may remember releases by Fear Factory, Marilyn Manson, Korn, and Rob Zombie. And meanwhile, in the metal underground, bands were becoming more progressive, techy, and just starting to go off on these really wild tangents. As a result of that, the best albums that you guys chose are very diverse, very heavy, and in a lot of ways, skull fuckers. So which version of 1998 metal did you guys vote in? Why don't we talk about it? First up, an absolutely fantastic choice. You guys voted in Gorgut's Obscura. That one was released in June 1998 on Olympic Recordings. <laughs> First up, bravo for voting this in. Obscura is a very challenging, very dark, very dissonant technical death metal album that physically can make you uncomfortable. Obscura is a bit of an evolution from the band's previous technical death metal style that evoked bands like Morbid Angel. And for this album, they went headlong into this completely dissonant, scronking, screeching style that is nevertheless incredibly filled with hooks and very well produced. Although some people cite the band's second album, The Erosion of Sanity, as their best, Obscura's got this completely uncomfortable, dissonant hideousness that you really cannot deny. And here, I have to give them massive props because this album in particular really helped trigger the Quebec tech death scene. As a Western Canadian person who really loved this style, it was a huge honor to actually be able to see all these bands inspired by Gorguts, like I and Dissonance, Naraxis, Beneath the Massacre, actually be able to tour across the country. And of course, Gorguts is not singularly responsible for that scene, but I do think that they had a massive role in blowing the doors wide open for Quebec tech death. Gorguts, we salute you. For this, you're getting five skulls out of five. Coming at number four on your votes is System of a Down's self-titled record. Came out in June 1998 on American Recordings. With the bullet called live. Yeah, mama called live. Yeah. You know that every time I try to go where I really want to be, it's already where I am. Cause I'm already now. Rock on, Mojo. Most from pain. Most said they got round all day. Who can find it? So without a doubt, this is a incredibly confusing, fascinating record. It's this prog, new metal, Armenian-influenced juggernaut that has a lot of different things going on. I'll be honest, I haven't really listened to System of a Down in a long time, but when I was a kid and this record came out, it actually triggered this massive conversation. The band is very politically infused. I remember having conversations with my friends about mandatory minimum sentencing, about the drug wars, about the Armenian genocide. I know these are topics that metalheads don't often like to discuss, but with System of a Down, you cannot separate the politics from the band. Musically, this album has aged very well. It's got these very crunchy hooks, military-esque drumming, and a lot of sing-along lyrics. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I started listening to it, tried to do it a couple of times, and it did get grating, and I think that's because, as a metal fan, my tastes have changed substantially over the years. That being said, I'm not one of those pretentious hipsters who's gonna deny the influence that this band had on an entire legion of metal fans. I strongly suspect a lot of you were very influenced by this record, just as I was, and for that, we're giving it four skulls out of five. Number three in the top five albums of 1998, as chosen by you, is Opeth's My Arms, Your Hearse, released in August by Candlelight Records.
holy shit, this song rips. I know that this might be a bit of a contentious statement, but I'm pretty sure My Arms Your Hearse is possibly the best Opeth record, and it's also the one that signaled that they were gonna become a full-blown progressive rock act. Further evidence of this theory is supported by this fantastic book in my personal collection. It's called Mean Deviation, and it's the history of progressive metal. And I actually have a little segment that I wanted to read you guys. Fact number one that supports this theory of mine. My Arms, Your Hearse was taken from a line in Comus's diabolical drip drip of 1971. As I carry you to your grave, My Arms, Your Hearse. If you don't know Comus, they're a kick-ass prog rock band. Michael Ackerfeld actually booked them for the 2014 rendition of Roadburn, which I went to. So thanks, Michael Ackerfeld. Fact number two. My Arms, Your Hearse marked one of Opeth's most significant evolutionary shifts. So what do we mean when we say evolutionary? This was the band's first concept record, and it also had this great expansive style. There was multiple shifts within each song. Michael Ackerfeld would go from these deep death metal growls to a more clean style of singing. There was folk music integrations, and things were seamlessly shifting between death metal, black metal, prog, and folk. And this album is, it's a masterpiece. I'm so stoked that you guys voted this in. Every album on this list is great, so that's awesome. As you can see, I'm pretty pumped. This is a classic. It's getting five skulls out of five. At number two, Flying Guardians Nightfall in Middle Earth, released in April 1998 on Century Media. Save us from the shell. Oh man, that music video, what a waste for such a good fucking chorus because wouldn't it have been so rad if we had gotten a battle from the Silmarillion? To that point, Nightfall in Middle Earth is, I would say, Blind Guardian's best attempt at theater metal. This one's based on the Silmarillion of J.R.L. Tolkien, which I don't know if you've tried reading it, but that one's a bit of a slog. This album has so many awesome sing-along hits and Hansi, this guy is one of the best vocalists in heavy metal, period. He definitely is evoking Freddie Mercury of Queen. And not only that, but if you've gone to a Blind Guardian show, you know that there's so many hits from this album that are always on the set list. And everyone is screaming along and going berserk. This album is fantastic. It really goes to culminate the epic power metal sound that the Blind Guardian has now relied on for the last 20 years of their career. And not only that, but it kind of shifts away from the speed metal style of their earlier offering. The guitars still retain some of that, but they're still very epic, melodic, and blazing fast. So this album's got a lot going for it. That said, it is not even in the top, well, maybe it, it's in the top five of Blind Guardian albums. But when I say that, it's not really a criticism because Blind Guardian honestly for me is probably the standard to which most power metal if not all power metal should be judged they are fantastic they've evolved considerably over their career and this album hell if i made an album like this i would say it's a fucking masterpiece and everyone who said it wasn't would be wrong so because this album is a little bit too long and there's a little bit too many interludes but it's still very 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 good it gets a four and a half out of five now for your number one by a long shot. Like I'm saying that this album got almost as many votes as all of the other albums combined. That is Death, The Sound of Perseverance, the legendary metal band's final studio album. It came out in September on Nuclear Blast. <laughs> The Sound of 
Perseverance is the seventh and final studio offering by Death. And I do need to contextualize this review a bit because I know a lot of people who are hardcore Death fans have mixed feelings on this album. So to contextualize my perspective, this was the first Death record that I was ever exposed to as a very young kid. And I'm pretty sure that they are the reason why I figured out about Judas Priest when I was like 13 years old because of that really good cover on the album. That being said, this is a weird album for people because there is a new lineup. And not only that, a lot of the songs apparently were retooled and they were originally written for Control Denied. If you want to learn more on that, read the link in the video description. There are a few other things that we need to remember. This is Death's most diverse and melodic record. Also the final record and the final thing that Death released before Chuck Schuldiner died. It followed 1995's highly celebrated symbolic. So as you can see, this album has a lot of metaphorical baggage associated with it. And I really think that people have recontextualized what they think about this record in the wake of all that information. Now, we've removed ourselves from all of that. And when we get down to it, there's a reason why you guys voted this in as your number one of 1998. First, the solos. Chuck is, was, was a guitar god. And his soloing all over this album is excellent. New drummer Richard Christie has this great, clattering, weirdly abrasive style that really helped him make his mark on the genre despite him being a newcomer. Now, I've seen some really negative reviews of this album from fans, and they all seem to forget to remember that Death became a lot more progressive at the beginning of the 90s and that the sound of perseverance was the culmination of that. Of course, we also have to remember that Control Denied first album and the last thing that Chuck ever recorded came out shortly after this record. So all of these things are very closely tied together. But all of that still resulted in a masterpiece by death and an album that people are going to remember for a long time. Yeah, I'm giving this one five out of five. <laughs> it's great. There you go. That's your top five. But we missed a lot of records. Rounding out your top 10 are Meshuggah, Chaos Sphere, Korn, Follow the Leader, Bruce Dickinson, Chemical Wedding, Fear Factory's Obsolete, and Iced Earth, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Now we're getting to that point where uh, we talk about what I like. And obviously I really like the albums that you all put, picked, but if I could have thrown a few more choices in there, they would have been the death metal band Incantation with their record Diabolical Conquest, would have also picked The Chasm, Death Cult for Eternity, The Triumph. And finally, I would have also talked about this little known doom band, Pagan Altar, that I've definitely not talked your ear off about. But they put out their record, Volume 1, in 1998, that had been recorded in 1982. So finally became available. And that one, masterpiece. So that was 1998. What'd you think? Let us know in the comments, and we'll be back soon with more Overkill Rewind.